and welcome everybody, Lionheart here and I am back with the beard hat. I've been doing many vlogs lately and it's just been too hot to actually vlog with the beard hat but I'm doing this video early in the morning so it's quite cool and also my hair is really messy so I thought better wear the beard hat. Anyway this is my gaming laptop review uh, pros and cons um, vlog. Now this is not a buyer's guide for a gaming laptop. I will be going over a couple of gaming laptops, probably some of the top end ones out there at the moment very briefly um, later on in the video, but I won't specifically be going this is a great laptop to buy for this. I will be doing that shortly though, I'll be doing a buyer's guide for gaming laptops and desktop PCs and you know custom built PCs uh, and parts and all that upgrades and things like that uh, in about a week's time for Rome 2 and already the beard hat is falling down on me, I need to pin up the the beardy bit. Um, so yeah, I will be doing kind of a buyer's guide in about a week's time. So if that's what you're looking for, please watch this video though, because it probably, if you're looking for a gaming laptop, this should probably help clear up a few misconceptions. So I'm going to go kind of through the pros and cons first of all in the first part of this video, um, then briefly look at a few um, of the top end uh, gaming laptops that are out there at the moment, and all the most recognisable brands at least, and kind of look at briefly at their pros and cons. And then I'm going to briefly talk about my personal experience and kind of round up with my conclusion, my review of owning a gaming laptop. And uh, obviously here's mine, my, uh, my MSI GX740, which I've had for four years now. It's done me very well um, and it, it still works. I will tell you more about that later though. Um, so yes, the pros and cons. Now... When I looked into a gaming laptop, I did a lot of research. I think that's kind of something... With a desktop PC, to an extent, you can literally go, oh, I want a desktop PC, you look at one, you look at the spec, and you buy it. With a gaming laptop, it takes a little bit more, I think. I think you need to do a little bit more research. I think that's what perhaps is a bit daunting for some people, because they just about get their heads around desktop components, and then they see... Um, laptop mobile components, and they're a bit... Uh, they're a bit unsure about them. So... Let's go through some of the pros and cons. So, so obviously, the biggest pro, and is I would say ultimately, it's the extra money you end up spending on a laptop is because it's a portable device. Um, you can carry it wherever you want. Uh, you can take it to university as I did. You can take it to your friends as I did. Uh, you know, I've been to sort of land land parties um, and sort of uh, you know gaming. Not conventions, but you know, gone around some friends and they've all brought their PCs and lugged them around. And I've turned up with a laptop and opened the lid. I'm set up in you know two seconds. They take you know a couple of minutes to sort their, themselves out. Plus they have to carry the huge thing. Um, you know, it can it can um, surf the internet wirelessly. It comes with a wireless card built in. So most PCs, well, I don't know. There was a phase I personally found about five years ago where. Every PC, pre-built PC you bought, was um, came with a wireless card. Now it seems it's phased out. People are going back to cables. It's all it's all different all over the place. Or you know, some people just go you know buy the PC and then you buy the extra wireless card to go in. So uh, I guess another pro is what it does have a battery. You know, it is it is that extra portability. You can you know you don't have to be plugged in all the time. Um, sure, probably gaming. Even on the best laptop, you're only going to get you know an hour, hour and a half tops on the best battery, but it's better than nothing. Um, I'm going to keep looking over that screen if you're wondering because I've got some notes and shiz. Um, you can you can customize laptops prior to buying it. That's that's um, you know that's a, that's a feature for most for most gaming laptops. For normal laptops, probably not so much. For gaming laptops, if you buy it from a good gaming website or you know or a good gaming manufacturer where there, where there are options majority of the time you can tweak some things in a gaming laptop like PC specialist cyber power uh, alienware um, so you can um, you can normally choose the process so the RAM sometimes the hard drive size and sometimes the video card as well um, but I'll talk about some cons in a moment as to why that you know that choice is quite important and with a gaming laptop it is you know it is a choice it is a quite a selective choice because here's where we come to the cons the value of a gaming laptop now my MSI GX 740 four years ago cost me 800 pounds now that was with an operating system it was Windows 7 64 bit um, 
and it actually came with a free backpack, which was useful for carrying it around. It's quite a nice backpack. Um, some of the zips and stuff have now sort of died on it, but I've, I've used it pretty much every day for at least three and a half years, and the, the other half year I was, you know, every few days. You know, while I was at uni, I pretty much, every time I had a lecture, I'd go in, laptop, in backpack, in I went. Lecture, out comes laptop from backpack, you know, lecture, time notes, back in backpack, carry it back. You know, it was in that backpack, in and out of that backpack all the time. You know, it got daily use, um, you know, and uh, it served me well. It's still working. Um, but yeah, the value of a gaming laptop, £800 for mine. Now, the spec in it, probably you would find in around about a, f a £500 PC. So you're thinking, okay, where's the extra £300 coming from? Well, before you think that's really overpriced and that you should definitely go desktop, let's think about it. That laptop comes with a screen. So let's say, you know, okay, it's a 17-inch screen, £70 for a reasonable screen. It's, got, it's not got a full HD resolution. It's got a 1680 by 1050 resolution, but it's still pretty good. So say 70 quid for you know, the, the screen. You've got a keyboard and a mouse essentially in the trackpad, let's say 30 quid for that together, you know, that's £100 there. You've got speakers, speakers can range from any sort of price, let's say £20, £120 there. Um, you know, so an extra 120 okay, well we're looking at 6 620 £620. So where's the other £180 going? That is essentially what I would like to call the portability tax. <laughs> Um, because that is one of its biggest pros, yet it factors into its value as one of its cons. With a desktop, you buy it for a stationary purpose. For a laptop, you don't. And so, you have to acknowledge the extra cost. Part of that, you are actually paying so you can take it places. You are paying so that the technology is small enough so that you can literally do... No, I'm not going to juggle the gaming laptop. Um, you know, you, you are paying so that it is reasonably light, although that is not that light, but then the amount of spec in it is reasonable. That can play, uh, okay, so to illustrate, play Shogun 2 Total War on medium high. I played Napoleon on high ultra. Um, it didn't like Shogun as much. Um, but yeah, with, with large battles, good detail. I can play Battlefield 3 on that on on low, medium settings, and it plays quite well, actually. Um, it plays Crisis. I did some benchmarks, so you can, you can check them out across my channel, actually. Um, and that was four years ago, and it still plays, you know, today's latest games. That will run Rome 2 as well. The spec in that will run Rome 2. Um, but... It's four years old now, and mobile technology has come on a long way. Now, this brings back to one of its other cons, and kind of coming back to that, looking back at that pro that you can customise it. Yes, you can customise it before you buy, but a lot of people, specifically on my on my YouTube videos, uh, of my gameplay of Total War and things like that, say, oh, I want to upgrade my, my laptop, what graphics card would you suggest? You can't. That's the simple answer. Bar some really expensive... Um, or kind of like gaming laptops that are built on kind of a bare bones sort of uh, motherboard hardly any gaming laptops allow you to upgrade the graphics chip now I say chip because I don't really see it as a card because it's actually you know soldered onto the board for most of them or it's connected direct to the board so I see it as a chip, a graphics chip rather than a graphics card in a laptop uh, and I've, I've opened mine up and had a look at it, cleaned it all out many times before so really that's why it is key to if you're going to get a gaming laptop you have to really do your research you can't just find one that you like and you have to you have to think i mean when i bought this i was hoping this gaming laptop would last me at least my 3 years at uni it's done that it's done it by an extra year it's done great so um you know that's really you know you kind of have to fruit future proof yourself by perhaps paying more you know so it will last because otherwise if i spent 800 quid you know um, four years ago, and then halfway through, had to spend another eight hundred quid to get a, a new, more recent, more current gaming laptop. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, that's one thousand six hundred pounds, whereas this, you know, it's half the price. Um, so it's very important to really do your research and really find out um, what what parts it's got in, what graphics card it's got in, what's processor. Um, so yes, graphics cards. 
pretty much are a no-no. And not just because you can't, you know, take it, um, take the chip off the board and put a new one in. You can actually do that, and you can buy them from eBay or other stores, you know, things like that, actual mobile chips, graphics chips to put onto your onto your laptop motherboard. It's that it then won't be compatible with your motherboard because your motherboard was made, um, or that motherboard for that gaming laptop was made specifically to be combined with a certain graphics chip. So unless there's been like a BIOS update to flash your, your motherboard to accept a new graphics chip, generally it, it, it's not going to work and it's a lot of hassle actually flashing it sometimes. sometimes. Sometimes it can be easy, sometimes it can go horribly wrong, and then you've got a bricked um, laptop. So, customization in a way, post-purchase, is a huge con. With a PC, you know, take out the graphics card, the processor, the RAM, you can take it all apart and put it all back in. In fact, I have done that pretty much with my, with my gaming PC. It came with an AMD processor and a motherboard, I've now swapped that out for Intel. Um, processor and motherboard. It got a. Uh, it came with an ATI graphics card. It's now got an Nvidia. I've put a new hard drive in there. I've put new RAM in there. You know, I've completely redesigned and customized my PC as I needed to. With a gaming laptop, you can't do that. So you really. That's why sometimes I say don't just go for the the, the cheapest gaming laptop that you can afford. Go for the one that's going to last. So you know, if you have to save up an extra two three hundred pounds. Go for that one because that is the one that's going to last, and that you know you're not going to have to upgrade. Having said that, there's no customization. You can upgrade RAM in pretty much every single laptop because it's most likely one of the main things that's accessible that won't void your warranty. And I should say that in most cases, getting to your graphics chip or your processor will void your warranty because you'll break a void uh, a, wa a void warranty sticker. Um, but most manufacturers. Either you can ask them within their warranty, you can have a look in within their warranty um, contract, and it will actually say that you are allowed to change the RAM or hard drive, or, or most likely the RAM and the hard drive are not in areas where you will have to avoid a warranty sticker to to get to them. Basically, um, my gaming laptop has separate compartments for for RAM and the hard drive, separate from the main the main board, basically, um, where if you open that that up, it's it will void your warranty. Um, but yeah, so you can upgrade the RAM, and you can, in some laptops, upgrade the processors. In my laptop, actually, I did find out um, that you can upgrade the processor. You have to do a BIOS flash so that it will be accepted, but you can do it. You can upgrade the processor. Um, you can obviously, most of the time, put in a bigger hard drive. That's pretty easy to do. So there's limited um, customization and upgradability post-purchase. So that's why it's important to make those choices pre-purchase. Um, now another con that I've sort of seen that is obviously due to the size of the laptops um, they have a tendency to heat up really quickly and a lot of people get worried. Now laptops specifically they're parts that are made to get hot and sustain the heat. Even graphics cards today generally I think most Nvidia ones have a threshold of about um, 98 I've seen my graphics card recently in the summer sun um, hit 94 and it's, it's an Nvidia card, they always run hot anyway, they always run hotter than AMD so not too worried about that, it came straight down anyway, I whacked my fan up, brought it down nicely but um, with laptops obviously it's all in a compact space as you can see, let's have a look at the back of my game, you can see all the, um, you know, all the little uh, vents and things on the back you know, you'd have thought they'd just vent the whole thing on the back so it would try and be cool. But obviously you're going to get loads of dust in it. But you've got vents where the main areas are. So on mine, um, you've got kind of the um, the RAM is over here under this vent. Um, down here is the processor. And up here is the graphics card. And it only has a little vent, which I always thought was weird. I thought it would have a much bigger vent, to be honest. But it has this huge... No, it doesn't. No, that's, that's what I like. No, it is there. No. It doesn't have a vent on the side like most laptops do. It has it on the back. So that is the graphics card vent on my gaming laptop at the back. Um, so that's directly where the fan pushes all the heat out from the back. So it has pretty good cooling inside. And probably for the first few months, it's going to um, retain its kind of store-bought um, optimum cooling um, you know, efficiency. But it will, like any fan, like a desktop fan, it will start getting um, dust in there. It will start gradually being less effective as perhaps some of like the um, the cooling, um, uh, what do you call it? 
uh, the cooling paste um, will start to, you know, degrade and become less efficient. Um, and a lot of people sort of say, when you're looking at a game on the top, saying, oh no, don't get this laptop, it's too hot, you can't have it on your lap. Personally, I've never really gamed with my laptop on my lap. I've always had it on a on a table. And actually, in fact, they will tell you, most likely, within the instructions or, you know, the manual, to actually have it on a well-situated base. Because, as you can see, there's little rubber feet um, on the corners of the, uh, of the laptop, and on most gaming laptops, so that it rises it slightly up so that air can get under and cool the laptop. Now, what do you do with a PC if it's getting too hot? You buy, you know, a custom um, CPU cooler, you buy more fans. You can do that with a laptop, and most of the time it's a lot cheaper and it's all in one. Now this is a is a Coolmaster, I can't remember what the exact name is for it, but it's a Coolmaster cooling pad. It's the, it's the U3 edition because it's got three fans at the back. Now this was perhaps one of the best pieces of kind of tech accessory kit that I've ever bought because it works really well. So as you can see, when you place it down, it instantly raises your laptop up on a wedge. So your laptop will be at that degree. It doesn't distort the viewing angles at all, it's great. And then you can move the fans on the back any way you want. You just click them and you look, I can take it wherever I want, take that fan off and I can put it up over here. So you target um, specifically where your laptop's getting hot. Now for me, I put all these fans on one side because I put them all on the side where my graphics card was um, so that it would keep that side cool. By putting it on, I didn't see my temp my um, my ambient temperatures fall more than five degrees. But I what I did see was that by about twenty degrees less, it didn't heat up as much. So before it was going up to about eighty ninety in games. With this on, you know, it was only going up to about seventy odd, which is absolutely fantastic and a brilliant cooling solution. I really recommend one of these. They're about twenty thirty pounds. There's a U two edition with only two fans. So if you've got a hot gaming laptop. One of these is perfect, um, you know, and you can actually, which is pretty cool, if you take the fans off and clip them on the other side, if you want to carry your laptop around, you slot it in here, it comes with a strap, um, you slot it in here I should say, with a little gap, you slot it in here, and it comes with a strap, so you put your laptop in there, you move the fans around the other side, and your laptop goes in here, you strap it in, and then you've got this little handle up here, and you can walk along carrying it. So if you're going to a LAN party, that's a pretty cool feature. So if you're gaming a lot, this is a great bit of kit. So, and, you know, if that overheating issue, it's the same response I'd give, to, you know, if your PC's overheating. You buy a fan, you buy a cooler. This is the solution. And unlike some coolers, where they really don't work, honestly, if I'm going to be a sales guy for the Coolmaster um, U3 right now, this does work. Um, and it's a great bit of kit. Chuck it over there. Um, so, yes. So overheating, yes, it is going to be an issue because, I mean, look how small it is. Look at the amount of technology. Look at how big your tower is, probably, your desktop PC, and then compare that to the, the form factor of a laptop. Of course it's going to get hot. It's like some, some people sort of expect it's not going to get hot. Well, look, but look at it. It's tiny. Of course, where's the air going to go? Um, but it's not to, nothing to particularly worry about unless, you know, everything's going past 90, 100 degrees, and it's burning up and you smell burning plastic. They are meant to su su sort of sustain um, high temperature levels, not 24-7, like most things, because that will weaken it, but they can take it. But if you want to help it out, one of those Coolmaster U U3s or U2s will work great. Um, I think essentially that's, that's all the cons and pros that I've kind of got to bring to the table. You know, ultimately the biggest con is the price. Um, and the biggest pro is the portability. So really you have to work out whether you can justify the con of spending that much money to getting the value of not just a high spec machine but one that's portable. So let me briefly end, end this, um, this video by talking about my own experience and then I will actually come back and talk about three um, top end laptops right before I finish off this vlog. I was going to do it before, but changed my mind. Different flow of thought. So let me talk about my gaming laptop briefly. It's an MSI GX740. Now, it wasn't MSI's, you know, flagship extreme gaming um, laptop when I bought it. Uh, it was one of their sort of mid-tier ones. Their, their ones, ideally, if I'd had more money, I would have gone for one of their 
uh, one of their laptops, which was around about the £1,100 mark. But I was just about to go on to uni. I really didn't have much money. Um, I'd saved up quite a bit to try and get this laptop. And, um, you know, I was happy that it only cost me £800 in the end, considering that was a good, at the time, £200 more than my current parts of my desktop PC had cost me. I was going, ah. But it comes with a screen and speakers. That was fine. So, I guess to review it, as it would say, was it worth it? Yes, it was fantastic. The fact, the fact that I could carry it to and from uni, every time I came home um, for the weekend, I could bring it back with me. Obviously, I have my gaming desktop here, but when I went back to uni, I had a brilliant, um, a brilliant multimedia laptop that could play games on really good quality. It could actually record some of my videos, and I think my Napoleon Total War... Uh, either the Denmark or the Dutch one, a few parts of that were actually recorded on that laptop. Uh, and the quality wasn't that much different, and that handled Darth Mod on as well. So there were a lot more units on the field, and even though it had kind of a slower co clocked processor, it's an i5 in there, but I think it's only clocked to 2.4 gigahertz. It did turbo up to like 2.7, but even though it had a, a slower clock processor, it still handled that game quite well. So, you know, I'm, I'm actually really thrilled that it's lasted me four years. Now, there's a reason why I'm not using it now, and that's actually because, unfortunately, it must know that its time has ended and that it can actually relax, is that if we're going to review this laptop personally, it's a great laptop, um, very powerful. Now I see how MSI kept the price down on this model specifically so that it was more affordable for, for gamers, basically. Um, and they did that by including a 17-inch screen, but it didn't have a full... 1080p or 1080 resolution. It had a 1650, no, 80 by 1050. That keeps the price down. The screen, it's an alright screen, it's not the flashiest screen in the world, but it's good. And also the, um, the casing is mainly all plastic. Now the lid looks like brushed alu um, aluminium, or like that brushed metal finish, and it feels really nice too. However, if we look along the back, I don't know if you can see, you can see the kind of the split um, sort of there. Yeah, you can see it really there. The split on the actual hinge at the back of the gaming laptop. Now, opening and closing that laptop over the past four years, I wouldn't want to guess how many times that's been. But it's taken its toll on the plastic, and unfortunately it has snapped, and I have since found out that there's a deeper problem than that, and that, in fact, instead of the hinge working within its little screw to, you know, obviously it have a screw and it would go like that. It's not actually using this screw anymore. It's actually just bending on its own rather than pivoting on the screw. So the actual metal is warping and being bent to close and bent to open. So that is eventually going to snap. And I keep getting like bits of plastic. If I open it again, I keep getting bits of plastic flying out from this split um, because obviously it's shearing things off in there. So, the laptop itself works, but at the moment the screen is probably likely to fly off <laughs> because one of the hinges is essentially gone. Um, now, I can repair that, but right now I don't need a gaming laptop. I'm back home, I've got my desktop PC, so perhaps I'll look into repairing that at some point, or I may sell it on um, because it still works. I wouldn't sell it on for sort of like um, not working or for parts essentially because. You can easily fix it. You could take it down to I could take it down to my local store, Novatech, and it would cost me about two hundred pounds, about one hundred and fifty for a new screen, and fifty pounds for probably the labour charge of, of, of installing it. I would try it myself, but I've had a look in there, and it's a bit daunting. There's a lot of wires, a lot of cables everywhere, and I don't particularly feel up to that sort of challenge. But um, it is doable, or it's got plenty of, um, as you've seen, I'm sure when I flashed it along, it's got um, an HDMI out, and it's got a VGA out. Uh, a VGA out so you can just hook it up to an external monitor and you can easily reach under the screen and just hit the power button connect up a keyboard and a mouse and it's basically like a mobile workstation and it's a reasonable one at that so it's not dead it still works it's just as we can see with that design the you know I pay 800 pounds for a cheaper for a cheaper quality build but it still lasted me four years, which I'm quite happy with. Some people upgrade their whole PCs after four years. I've upgraded my PC after less than that, to be honest. Um, but it still works, and it's fine, and I can get it fixed and sorted. But 
I had to tell you that because that hasn't changed, despite that, that hasn't changed my opinion of, of my gaming laptop or gaming laptops in general. I think that if you can afford the right one, then they're worth it. Now, if you happen to have a lot of money, a lot of money, and you want to get a top-end gaming laptop, I'll quickly go through perhaps three of the top ones out there right now. So, there's the Asus G75 um, VW, and now all of these prices are in US dollars because that's what the site threw up at me and I haven't had a chance to convert it into pounds. But um, for $1,344, you can get the Asus G75 VW. Now, um, the specification of this laptop, let me get it, there you go. up. It's an i7 Ivy Bridge, 3720QM processor. It's got Windows 7 64-bit. It's Windows 8 ready as well. It's got 16GB um, of RAM. Um, it's got a 17.3 inch HD screen, although the screen is only um, 1366 by 768 resolution, so that's actually kept its price down quite considerably. Um, and it's got the option of a GTX 660M or 670M uh, NVIDIA card with either 2 gig or 3 gig video memory. Um, 750 gig hard drive, Blu-ray, and lots of other features. So that's kind of probably the cheapest one I'm showing you of the top end of gaming laptops right now. But that's a good gaming laptop, and in pounds, that would be just over the thousand pound mark, I think. Um, going to probably the other end of the spectrum, the other extreme, we've got the MSI laptop. We've got the MSI GT70. Now that is $2,351 uh, on this website I'm looking at. These prices may not be the most current. Um, it's got, actually it's not, it's been quite vague with the specifications, but it says it's got the latest um, third generation Intel Core i7 i5 processor. So it's not got the Haswell uh, fourth generation processors in there, in there yet, but there are laptops with those in. Um, it's got a 17 inch full HD uh, 1920 by 1080 anti-glare screen. So again, that's quite an expensive screen, that's a full uh, HD uh, resolution screen as well. Um, it's got Super RAID in there with the hard drives and it's got a, a killer gaming network um, network card so to keep your ping low for gaming so this is a kind of an a heavy enthusiast class gaming laptop and to top it all off it's got a GTX 670M graphics card with 3 gig of GDDR5 um, VRAM now that's an, that's another um, thing to to watch out if you are looking to get a good gaming laptop. Get one with dedicated um, VRAM on the graphics card. Don't get an integrated card. Um, get a get a one with a dedicated graphics chip with its own dedicated VRAM because you'll be far better for it. And it's also got um, sound by um, Dyn Audio, um, which it says is for extreme audio performance. Extreme. Um, <laughs> I know the MSI laptops actually they, they do have really great sound and in fact the, the speakers on mine were very good but these are a, a notch above that. Now finally I have to come to perhaps the, the brand, the name that you will all know but you will all, there will be a lot of hate for them and that's Alienware. Now this is the Alienware M17X R47263BK whatever that means. Um, that's only $1630. Now I say only that, that's probably about one thousand two, one thousand three hundred pounds That's a lot of money, but if you have, I'm, I'm doing this purely for if you have the money, this is what you should aim for. Or, if you're looking for a gaming laptop and you're prepared to save up, and you want something that's going to last, these machines will do it. Now, a lot of people are going to go, oh, why Alienware, you know, it's overpriced. It might seem overpriced, but what you get is top gaming laptop quality. You won't get the plastic shearing off at the back on the hinge like my MSI did. You do have a lot of customization with Alienware as well that some of the other manufacturers don't always give you, although MSI and Asus do offer some. But Alienware arguably offers the most. And their machines are fantastic. I've never owned one, but I can appreciate as a as kind of a techie, as a as a PC nerd, as as a guy who knows his PC tech they're good 
and the, the amount of money you pay for them in the end, it might seem like it's going to really hurt, but the quality you get in return is worth it. So this, this Alienware MX-17 has um, an i7-3610QM, which um, turbo boosts up to 3.3 gigahertz, which is a pretty reasonable speed. It's got 8 gig of dual channel uh, DDR3 RAM at 1600 MHz. Um, it's got a 1 terabyte RAID um, hard drive situation, 2 500 gigs there. Uh, and it's got a 2 gig GDDR5 AMD Radeon HD 7970M. It's got a full um, 920 by 1080 17 inch screen. Um, and it doesn't have a Blu ray player, but it's got a DVD burner. As well, and it's got you know it's a lot of um, extra software included with within that. Um, it's got wireless N card in there, Bluetooth 4.0. It's got a Creative Sound Blaster um, and uh, THX True Studio Pro software. Good, great sound on that. So, if you look at those, that's probably the one to go for out of those three. But I'm not abdicating that you go for any of them. I will be doing a full buyer's guide for gaming laptops, specifically for Rome 2, um, in about a week's time. I'll also be doing a PC buyer's guide, and I will be doing several stages. I'll be doing the kind of the cheapest, best gaming laptop that I'd recommend up to the, you know, the extreme, and somewhere in the middle ground as well. Now, one thing I will finish off is that when I've been talking about um, graphics chips in there, and sort of saying like the, um, so go look at the Alienware for instance, the 7970M, even though it says it's 7970, it's not as good as a 7970 desktop. It bears its name, is its only similarity. It will probably be around um, a third weaker than the desktop card, so it'll be about, you know, it'll be two thirds as good, but it won't have that final third to, you know, be a true 7970. Most likely, what that is, it's maybe a. 7850 perhaps in terms of com comparable performance it may be higher than that I haven't actually looked at that specifically but judging on how they go like as I um, with mine mine has a my gaming laptop has a a 7 uh, no, right, a 5870 uh, mobility and M after it now those of you that remember you know the 7870 desktop cards from AMD they were great top performing cards However, this is a mobility series card in my laptop, a 7, uh, a, ooh, why do I keep saying 7, a 5870 mobility actually comes out in terms of desktop performance cards about the same level as a 5750 to a 5770. They were sort of mid-tier cards rather than the 5870s sort of um, high tier. But anyway, I've rambled on for half an hour. Um, but I hope this video has been useful. I hope I've covered some of the pros and cons um, of gaming laptops. I hope I, you know, you've seen some insight from my experience from my four years of using one. And if someone said, would you buy another one? If I had the need for portability, yes, I would. But now, currently in my current situation where I'm back home with my gaming PC, I don't have the need for one. So I wouldn't be buying a replacement for mine just yet. Um, but if you need one for portability, and that's what you have to weigh out, can I afford the portability. It's not whether you can really afford the laptop, it's whether you can afford the extra for the portability. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Please remember to comment, rate, subscribe, thumb up this video if you enjoyed it. Um, my third age parts are probably not going to be up until Saturday, so they're going to be delayed today. Uh, but they'll be up then. Uh, it, and in the meantime, check out my new Mountain Blade Warband Florist Mod series. Go check them out, they're on my channel. See you all again soon. Ciao for now.